Right. Some bad news on the development front. One of the parts failed quality control. Is that ominous glow in the distance? We know how to fix it, but it'll take some extra resource. It's on hold for now, but you can order the extra work from the laptop at any time. <laughs> Hey what's going on guys, I over here and welcome back to my F1 2017 career mode, episode number 57 today for the USA Grand Prix in Season 3. And yep, yeah, it was bound to happen wasn't it? It just had to happen, it was written in the stars, more like the two development uh, updates we're going to get for this episode for the USA Grand Prix have both failed now. So after the really good success of the last one, the chassis weight reduction uh, coming to us at the Japanese Grand Prix, the tire wear upgrade, the major one, and the minor engine upgrade boost we were going to get to the crankshaft I think that was, uh, have both both failed now, so we're going to have to wait till minimum of next episode. Well, you can see on the top right, we don't have enough points to actually upgrade both those parts again and uh, essentially repair them quite yet. We have enough points to maybe get one of them after practice, and then hopefully we'll get in the, the rest of the points after the race and qualifying uh, to then get both, and then that'll be a double hit at the Mexican Grand Prix. And I don't believe, uh, at least I don't think so, and I hope so, I don't think there's a way for them to fail twice in a row. Like, if you repair them, I don't, I've never heard of them failing again. So hopefully that's a guarantee. Guaranteed. Now we'll get the double hit at Mexico, which is going to be still pretty good because Mexico is probably one of the circuits we'll struggle at uh, compared to USA. But still, it would have been very, very handy to have the tire wear update, at least at USA, and also the engine upgrade, really, because it's a bit of a compromise of uh, running downforce in the first sector and then needing some power down that really long back straight, obviously. And the tire wear would also help uh, USA coat a very abrasive track surface. But you can see after practice, we did get enough points to uh, purchase the repair for the major tire wear update there to the chassis side of things and then we'll have to wait until after qualifying and the race to then hopefully get the 500 points needed to buy the engine upgrade and repair that essentially rebuy it I should say so we move into qualifying then you can see absolutely soaking here at Kota for Q1 at least it looks like the rain is slowly going to get away from us as we go through Saturday so it may be a completely dry Q3 session once we get to that but we're starting off on the full wet tyres indeed we set our first flying lap and we filled up fuel for about three or four laps here so I'm just going for Bank collapse basically getting faster and faster as definitely as we've seen in the, in the past it's a case of kind of getting confidence in the car building up the pace uh, unlike the dry conditions it's uh, not really a kind of just get in there bang in one lap time then go and you can see I'm constantly improving lap time there going across the line for the second time then and uh, popping up in P9 at the moment but we can definitely improve that even more so and I think there's definitely time to find as we're behind Carlos Sainz and I would like to think we're going to be out qualifying the Toro Rosso's uh, this afternoon around the USA Grand Prix circuit so we're going to go for even more time we've just gained a little bit in sector one there as we come through to the end of the lap we've gained even more time and we come across the line that's a bit better there from us in p7 ahead of one of the has cars there of roman grosjean behind sergio perez and we do manage to get into q2 then in p11 nico holkenberg in a very lofty p4 so like malaysia the car at least in nico's hands performing very well i can't say the same can be said for me um you know generally i'll be honest i do struggle in the wet conditions compared to the ai so that's still one area when the rain comes in on any kind of session whether it be the race or the, the qualifying sometimes it does get me a little bit kind of pulling my collar as I know I maybe can't perform as well as I could do in the dry conditions whereas in the past on F1 games perhaps you may be praying for some rain if you're in a lower car because that may equalize things compared to the AI but this year for sure the top guys especially very on it uh, in terms of the the speed and the, 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 the momentum they carry through the corners uh, in these intermediates uh, e even in the full wet conditions especially so in those damp conditions where it's kind of transitioning from dry to wet or uh, you know the other way around so we come across the line then and it's going to be p6 uh, at the moment ahead of grosjean once again behind esban ocon and we're going to go for a second lap time then and uh, we had to actually go back into the garage go out again as i didn't fuel up for two laps consecutively i kind of went for a low run came back in changed the tires to a new set came uh, back out again with the same amount of fuel uh, fueled in but you can see we're going towards the end of the session now only about a minute or so left and uh, we're not really getting any time we're actually losing hand over fist in the last few corners as the track starts to actually dry here DRS is enabled as we come across the line and Grosjean you can see in the top left to set a lap time on the ultra soft tyres so as we come then back into the pit so we go round the entire lap to come back into the pit lane we're in P9 P10 then it'll be but you can see as everyone comes across the line we're going down even further P11 then Vettel goes fastest it's a case of everyone has made a very late call to go on to ultras not everyone the, the top 9 or 7 that is a top 7 have gone out on ultra softs and that means it's not myself 
and Nico Hulkenberg out. The two Mercedes cars incredibly, incredibly lucky to just get into P9 and P10 then. So... Ah, oh, a bit of a calamity in uh, the USA Grand Prix to start off things, uh, as Vettel is going to have a chance to get pole position then in Q3, and not even Nico, my teammate, can maybe do anything to challenge him or just ruffle the feathers of the top guy. So both of us out there, P11, and I, I'm uh, finding myself down in, I think that was P14 then. So a bit of a miserable start to the race weekend as a whole. The two parts failed, and now we've knocked out Q2. Unfortunately, it's feeling all too much like the Singapore Grand Prix at this rate. Let's hope there's not a safety car bug uh, in the race, shall we? But so we move into the race then. It's all nice and sunny, thankfully, thankfully, because I actually don't think I'm going to be performing too well in the wet conditions if it was in the race. But I believe there was forecast for perhaps some rain at the end of the race. So going to have to watch out for that. So it's going to be a case of hopefully we're, we're kind of away from any cars at the end of this race. Otherwise, we may get overtaken right at the end there. You can see Lewis Hamilton, though, ends up on pole position. So that's good for us. Uh, not to see Sebastian there on pole. I would have thought, knowing my luck, he would have been there on pole. And uh, obviously myself and Nico, both have to do a job now today uh, out of the top 10. We can start on whatever tyres we want so that could open us up to you know, potentially trying a one-stop. If there's rain to come it means we could try a dry one-stop and kind of avoid a second pit stop for slick tyres and transition straight onto the Inters perhaps. We'll have to see when the rain exactly comes down then but let's look at the full grid and then we'll go to the race and see how we go. With that then let's run through the grid order. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Kimi Raikkonen completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Bottas, Ricardo, Sergio Perez, and Grosjean, Sainz, Massa, Kvyat, and Nico Hülkenberg, Ocon, and a Renault, Sebastian Vettel, and Magnussen, Stroll, Van Dorn, Marcus Ericsson, and Pascal Wehrlein, Alonso, and Max Verstappen completes the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So, looks like the F1 gods have brought some balance to our luck this race weekend now with Sebastian Vettel, you saw there in the grid uh, sequence, getting engine penalties enough, so, specifically to be alongside me on the starting grid. So, from what was, I'm assuming, maybe the front row, I think Vettel's dropped down to now right beside me. So, that's really great for us. Obviously, for the championship, that's huge. There's only five points in it. Now, both me and Vettel have to, once again, like Malaysia, but obviously, we're kind of in the middle instead of the back of the grid. We have to make our way up the order, and I'm confident, again, that I can try and start a little bit better than him and if we don't bottle into turn one hopefully we'll stay ahead of him and then we can just go on like that and try and defend if we can towards later on in the race if he tries to overtake us but we're going to change the strategy here you can see the rain is going to come down so instead of going long on the soft tires I thought we may as well go aggressive and go to another set of super softs and that will beautifully just bring us on to perfect timing you know as my tires my super softs to the second set are about to wear the rain will start to come down and we can just switch the inters there so it seemed like the more logical way to go about it so from p12 on the grid and our championship rival right Right beside us as we go to five red lights then for the USA Grand Prix and it's underway here at the Circuit of the Americas and it's a good start for us to the left hand side of Esteban Ocon I believe Vettel's actually on the other side of Ocon so we go three wide into turn one although we break a lot later than Ocon can we try to go down the inside of our teammate who's on the oh, set of ultra soft tyres so he's going a bit more aggressive as we try and get up into 10 places will be I believe he'll have the better line though we're going to lift off a little bit and let him through there's yellow flags oh look at the right hand side there's a car off it's Bottas Valtteri Bottas being absolutely punted off into the wall there. Almost didn't clock that as the silver kind of blended into the kind of a barrier he smacked into. So let's look at a replay of that as yellow flags are for that entire section. So nothing's going to be uh, done in terms of any overtaking then for that first part of that lap then as we look at a replay now to actually see what went on. So Bottas actually an initial good getaway but then a poor turn one and he goes side by side with Daniel Ricciardo trying to get up into third place there. Raikkonen in second, Hamilton first and then oh it's a very unfortunate locking of tyres there. But that's, a, that's really just a racing incident, unfortunately, from Bottas's perspective. Uh, and from the off-camera kind of off -camera shot, I'm just guessing it's going to be a case of, yeah, as they turn the corner, and Bottas is literally just carried uh, completely straight to the barrier. That's a really nasty crash for him, but unfortunately, it's pretty much just a racing incident there, really, as they both kind of just make a little bit of awkward uh, interlocking between the tyres, and there's just nothing you can do, really, especially with the AI. They don't, they don't really like to give up the position when they start interlocking like that, unfortunately. Um, so now we move on in to the end of lap one into sector three you can see we're behind Nico now we kind of lifted off to let him go into that S section but I thought I could kind of carry more momentum to overtake him but then of course due to Bottas 
uh, crashing into the wall. Yellow flag came out, so I was unable to overtake him. And now, Nico's actually the one looking further ahead to overtake one of the Taurus cars. I believe it's uh, the Russian, Danica Fiat, as uh, Hulkenberg goes around the outside. This will turn to the inside, though, for the next corner. So, clever stuff there from Nico to make the move around the outside. He kind of shoves Danica Fiat off the road a little bit, and he has to kind of tuck in behind my teammate. So, Nico making good progress and really kind of pulling the toe line for Renault and for this team to kind of show me the way, I guess. If we can try and, you know, be, be, be it kind of a chummy in a way, bit of a teamwork, kind of he passes one car, I pass that same car, he passes the next one, I pass that one, and in that way we can hopefully make really good progress up the grid, but that may be, it may be too wishful thinking on how good our car is going to be in the dry conditions, of course, I have no real idea, both of us don't, as we didn't make it into that dry Q3 session, uh, and neither of us set a dry lap time in Q2, so this is the first time really we've both driven the car in anger around the Circuit of the Americas, but we do make the pass, a very easy pass on the Toro Rosso there, around the outside on the right hand side for P9 in a straight line uh, obviously our car a little bit lighter on its feet after the chassis weight reduction we did and all that alters some engine upgrades compared to the Toro Rosso I'm guessing as now we moved on two laps later onto lap five down this main straight we've now got DRS Hulkenberg's been caught up behind the, the Williams car I believe it is ahead of him for the two laps I thought he would have been able to pass him uh, easy like the Toro Rosso but not the case and now we've got a chance to maybe make a cheeky little dive bomb down the inside it's gonna be so so close on the front right there we went completely full lock left to make sure we didn't make any contact with Holgenberg. Thankfully, we did not, but that pass didn't work out. A bit audacious, I, you know, I need to admit that. Very, very audacious move there, but I was getting a little bit impatient as I thought Holkenberg, as I mentioned, would have got past the Williams car, but of course, the Williams may have had a bit of a downgrade after the patch, the 1.9 patch, but it's still damn good in a straight line. And so now, as we have to wait until lap six, then up into turn one, the climb up the hill to the inside. Now, Nico feeds it around the outside and actually does really well to hang it around, obviously using the grip from his ultra soft tires versus my super softs. He's still there on the right-hand side. So as we go into the S section, we're so close to banging our front right tire to his left front. And we lift off a tad. If that wasn't my teammate, I definitely would have just squeezed that car out. But because it is my teammate, needs to give a bit more respect. We once again try a bit of audacious pass there to the inside of the left hand and lock up horribly. So although uh, I did, I am giving the respect to Nico. Also at the same time, it is getting rather, rather close and a little bit heated. And I suspect the guys on the pit wall are going to be pulling their collars a tad at how close we are getting, uh, our nose cone especially to the side part of Nico twice now there, as we go now once again down the main straight, this time hopefully I'll have the speed, we're much closer now and this time crucially, Hulkenberg does not have DRS off the Williams car, so this time you can see the, the, the difference in speed is just insane with DRS there, and locking up a little bit on the left, but that's fine, we'll make the next corner, and we're up into P8 then so, eventually, after an entire lap there, we do get that pass, and now we move on board with Sebastian Vettel who's making a little cheeky move around the outside the final corner that is a very weird place to try and make a move and fair play to Ocon for realizing Vettel was there otherwise that could have been a very easy move to squeeze him out onto the uh, curbing on the grass so he's left the door open really on the outside then they both have DRS actually as Ocon had it off Hulkenberg and Vettel off Ocon but now on the exit of turn one Vettel actually moves a little bit left to maybe squeeze the Frenchman out and he's going to get up the order and now he can quickly look at the back of my teammate uh, down the main straight on this next on the same lap actually so we move on back on board and in the DRS in the slipstream uh, Hulkenberg actually is DRS off me to help him a little bit Hulkenberg with the outside Vettel goes to the inside now and Nico is going to put up a very very decent fight actually and he's going to have the inside line he's going to shove Vettel off a little bit onto the curbing there as they go toe to toe a little bit of contact that you saw as the hand of anger goes up in the cockpit and Nico has actually done a fabulous job to just barge and kind of tap Vettel back in his order and back in his place so great stuff there from my teammate that's exactly what I want to be seeing there and uh, so, you know, he's doing me a favour, in essence, holding him up there somewhat as we now move later onto the end of lap seven. Massa coming into the pit, so we'll gain one position there up into what will now be P7 for us. As now we've got a few people still going longer. Carlo Sainz doing a fabulous job at the moment. My former teammate from season one in P6 there. As we move through the laps then, lap nine though, eventually everyone is starting to make their pit stops. And Hamilton from the race lead has made his pit stop already and comes out ahead of us. So I don't think we're going to be fighting for the race win for a third time in a row, guys. I'm going to be honest. If he's a whole pit stop ahead of us, but you never know. You never know. Never say never with the rain coming later. That may spice things up. And obviously Hamilton was the one that retired last race. So there's always that possibility as we come through the last corner now at the end of lap nine onto lap, uh, onto lap 10. Vettel now is the one that comes in. And Vettel was also an ultra soft, like Hulkenberg. So a different strategy from them. But a man who is on the same set of tyres as me is Esmond now on the super softs down the inside to try and make 
the move. We've locked up quite badly on the left front, so that's allowed the door to open, basically, and Ocon goes so wide off the track to swoop it around the outside there, so that's a very weird tactic to go off circuit to get the kind of wide line and get the turn in, and it's work worked out for him because he's still neck and neck with us into the stadium section, and we're just going to have to try and squeeze him out on the, on the triple right-hander there. A little bit of a bump and tap as Ocon tried his best to feed it around the outside, but I was having none of it there. I was going to keep that racing line, and so we'll stay ahead of the Force India, but that was a very, very weird sight to see. He went completely off circuit, nearly hit the grass even, as he took a really, really deep line to get the move around the outside of that, a little double uh, right-hander before the main part of the stadium, a uh, little section in Sector 3. And meanwhile, though, we've seen now Verstappen's overtaken Ocon, actually, so for all that fighting, Ocon's actually lost one place rather than gained one. He tries his best to maybe have a little bit, a bit of a feeder around the outside to turn one. Doesn't work out, and Verstappen is going to keep that position. So uh, a little bit of shame for Ocon there, for, for his sake, as we come into the pits now on the end of lap 11. And, of course, we're going to another set of super soft tyres. So as I was just mentioning before Ocon attacked me, uh, Vettel and Hulkenberg both on the ultra soft there. So they're going for a different strategy, obviously, as I mentioned. I'm going for two sets of super soft stints that are equally spaced out and that normally wouldn't get me to the end of the race in dry conditions. But because I know the rain is going to come down at some point then, I'm banking on the fact that I can go straight onto the inters off this, this second set of super softs. Whereas everyone else, I believe they're all on soft tyres now as Vettel actually pulls through into turn one. So Vettel has overtaken us then with the undercut as we actually get overtaken by the McLaren Honda of uh, Fernando Alonso. I think that is just about, I can see by the helmet, but uh, Vettel is past us, so he's made the undercut work. But I saw that he was on soft tyres, Nico as well. So both of them have gone ultra softs to soft, whereas I'm on two sets of super soft. So I'm going to be faster than Vettel in theory uh, on, on, a, on the faster compound of tyres. And also, I believe it looks like on the mini map as well, he's in a huge train. I mean, equally, I'm getting held up by Alonso here. I would have really ideally liked to have made a move in the S section. We have to wait until the hairpin before the main straight to dive it down the inside here to get that move. Although this will actually technically give us DRS then to help us down this straight. But Vettel is the next car along. We've got all this clean air and Vettel does not. He's got a five car train ahead of him and he's on slower tyres. So we should be able to very easily close up to him in theory and then we should have a very good chance to overtake him because we are on the softer compound. We've got fuel to burn um, and we don't need to worry about protecting our tyres uh, because he's, he's, he's going longer than us and we're not. And now as you can see Verstappen comes out the pit lane. We're going to make a lovely, lovely little switch back on the left hand side there and just kind of suss out where he's going to go. I could tell he's going to go wide as he came out the pit lane entry as it's a, a bit of a compromising line coming out the pit lane uh, rather than going from the racing line there. So just made a tighter apex for myself and got that move uh, done in a very swift motion. And now we catch up to Vettel now, the last corner of lap 14, and he's gone deep as I think the Toro Rosso car held him up somewhat. Signs locked up there, and so we've made the move on the left-hand side. DRS open, rich mix flowing, and we should get this pass done. We actually get it before the break zone even commences. Vettel tries his best to hang around the outside. We go deep on purpose to squeeze him out, and we're up into ninth place. And that is absolutely glorious. That is uh, literally what I needed to a T there. Lap 15, already ahead of Vettel. That's what I wanted. Now, let's look at a quick replay. Just to show off what actually happened with Vettel there. It was a little bit unclear, perhaps, from on board of my uh, my perspective. You can see into the last corner, the Toro Rosso is the one that double locks up. And that really hampers Vettel's line off that corner. You can see he went onto the curbing and then there, uh, back onto our POV for another quick look as we overtook him in a straight line there. So that was how we made that pretty damn easy move, actually, on Vettel. I would have thought it would have been a bit of a harder one, but this man that we're overtaking right now, Carlos Sainz, made things very easy for us, and we're down his inside, and we're up one more place. It's up ahead of us, meanwhile, is the Force Indy car of Sergio Perez, and that is battling the Williams car and shoves him off, just like Nico did to Vettel earlier on the Grand Prix, and Perez up one place there on Felipe Massa, I think that is, as now we move on through the laps. Lap 17 now, 11 laps to go in this Grand Prix. Hulkenberg makes a pit stop now. He's onto a set of ultra soft tyres, so Hulkenberg really compromised there, so he's made two stops onto slick tyres even before the rain stuff to come down whereas uh, I'm going to go longer obviously until lap 21 now so four laps later lap 21 and Vettel's done the same thing so both of us P6 and P7 now you can see so many droplets of rain coming down on our screen at the moment double lock up into the hairpin that actually Vettel's going to get us down the inside there cleanly past us as we made a huge mistake but we're going to get a really good uh, point of traction of course 
the super soft tyres working a little bit, bit better than the soft tyres in these conditions. And so we're right back up his gearbox. He's actually got his rear wing flap open, the DRS off us, because obviously he was behind us before the de detection point. But nevertheless, we go down the inside. It's oh so close. We lock up on the left front. But we just about make the corner work. And because of that, we went a little bit deep and actually uh, hampered Vettel's line. And so Perez, I think, or Ocon, I think it is actually, going around the outside there. And he's going to have a little bit of a move into the inside. He shoves Vettel off. He's actually Vettel's off the circuit. Great stuff there from Ocon, doing me a huge favour. So I've got not only Nico Hulkenberg earlier on, but Ocon also doing me a favour. As we go a little bit away, we're DRS disabled. We go a little bit off and nearly bottled it when Nico Rosberg went off in their 2015 USA Grand Prix. But thankfully, we just hold the line through. And it is definitely time to come in now for the set of intermediate tyres. You can see how much we've all bunched up there due to all that kind of side-by-side -side action into Sector 3. We only just narrowly uh, slow the car down there to make the pit lane entry. Could have been nasty. Broken our front wing on the entry would have been rather embarrassing. But Hulkenberg actually has to continue on for one more lap here as I've come in and he doesn't want to come in and double stack with me. So Hulkenberg's going to have to navigate these tricky conditions. Although it won't be too bad because let's be fair, the AI we've seen in the past so many times, they're, they're quite OP in these conditions when it's kind of changeable. It's going from dry to wet or wet to dry. They are so much better than uh, a player can be. So I'm sure Hulkenberg won't get hampered too much and he may actually benefit from some clean air rather than a load of cars ahead of him. But we come out in uh, what will be P8 just ahead of Vettel still. And we've got Carlos Sainz also continuing on on the dry tyres on Super Soft. So surely we'll be able to close up to him in this next lap rather easily but good to see we're still ahead of Vettel we haven't been jumped in the pits or anything like that that would have been rather uh, unfortunate but we go down the inside for a little bit of a late move there that was a late duck out to the left right up his gearbox science was uh, but we're up into P7 then the next car along is Sergio Perez on Inters so I don't think we'll be getting Perez this afternoon and as we come down the main straight on the next lap lap 23 Hulkenberg on the outside again just like we did with Verstappen we're going to try and take the title line but Nico unlike Verstappen kind of brake checks us on the apex of turn one we've now lost the rear end and we've just narrowly held it back onto the black stuff there as we onto the curbing and that's allowed Nico Hulkenberg to get ahead we just about managed to stay ahead of Vettel as obviously the line out uh, off turn one one compromised our speed so unfortunately that allowed Nico to get through and Nico just waltzed away and had the pace over me on the intermediates much like he did at Malaysia remember at Malaysia he would have had me and probably would have beaten me at the Malaysian Grand Prix if it weren't for my one-stop strategy at Malaysia and just like that then uh, now here at the USA Grand Prix around Kota uh, Hulkenberg has the pace uh, on me on the intermediate conditions like we saw also on the four wets in Q1 uh, so he's able to stay ahead in P6 so fair enough to him I mean he's a deserve a drive there for P6 for Nico and we're just going to come home in P7 I'm not actually too disheartened by that because the major important thing here is we're still ahead of one Sebastian Vettel so his teammate Kimi Raikkonen has actually won this Grand Prix in stark contrast though Vettel has had a dismal Grand Prix and he's going to finish behind me in P8 and so that is going to be a wonderful wonderful thing for us because of course that's not a heap of points but it's still going to close up that five point gap by I believe two points there because uh, P7 to P8 is going to be different to two points so we're going to be three points behind Sebastian Vettel now in the Drivers' Championship as the podium is Kimi Raikkonen, Lewis Hamilton and Daniel Ricciardo there so a bit of a resurgence for the Red Bull Racing team. Uh, they haven't been on the podium for a while there now. They've been really quite torrid this season so far but there you go confirmation only three points in it between myself and Sebastian Vettel. That is... Ooh, that's close. That's close. That is tasty. That is very, very tasty. Only three rounds to go. Mexico, Brazil, and the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Double upgrade coming next episode now, because of course, after this race, you can see uh, we've got over 500 points now, uh, following the qualifying and race R&D bonuses and the first driver bonuses, so we can purchase that engine upgrade once again to repair it effectively. So we've got the minor upgrade coming uh, for the engine, and we've got the major tyre upgrade coming for the Mexican Grand Prix. Obviously, Mexico, going to be great to have that engine upgrade. That minor one. And Tyre also was a huge issue for us both times in Season 1 and Season 2 around Mexico. So that's going to be a great thing. Even though it didn't come this race, it's still going to come in very much so uh, useful around Mexico. So I'm looking forward to that. We could potentially, I don't know, it's going to be tough to maybe take the lead of the Drivers' Championship next race. But we'll try, we'll try. But um, I think it's probably going to be more damage limitation next round. But, I mean, for the luck we've got in the last three rounds... You know, as I said before, never say never, never say never. Only three runs to go and three points in it. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this season ends, uh, guys. Hope you guys are equally as well. Smash that like button if you did enjoy this one, though. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I've been Ever. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.